all the candidates who are joining me live just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and tell me whether my audio visual quality everything is clear so that we can start with the session till you are going to report me this let me just brief you what is the ideal duration and what is the agenda for today's session the ideal duration for today's session is going to be approximately one hour and the agenda of today's session is that we are going to discuss some of the important concepts with the help of some questions which are most probably you will see in your bar 2023 examination you all must be aware that the gate examination is over engineering services examination is over now there are some psus which conduct their own written test which is apart from the gate recruitment process now this is one big opportunity for all those candidates for any reason they could not perform well in the gate examination now this is the time you should utilize that uh, hard work and focus on this exam bark there may be uh, isro also coming and there may be hal hpcl so many other exams are going to come where you can use your preparation for gate and you can excel in these psus and these psus are no less than clearing gate examination with a good rank anyways so everybody just quickly tell me in the comment section are you able to follow me and today we are going to discuss power system which is one of the important core subject for all the electrical engineers so everybody who is joining me live just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section like the session share the session with your friends and colleagues so that more and more people are going to be joining with us i know that uh, you all must be quite in a festive mood so before i start the session i want to wish all of you a very happy holy this year and may this holy brings vibrant colors in your life and your career should uh, have uh, all the colors like a rainbow and you get what you deserve what you aspire so all the best wishes from the team by juice exam prep so let's proceed some of you will be joining me for the first time so there is a brief introduction about myself my name is ashutosh as you can see on the screen i have more than 11 years of teaching experience i completed my mtech from it bhu in 2010 i have written couple of books and these are my areas of expertise before i start the session let me just brief you one important information about a important series we are going to start for bar 2023 it is going to be a super 15 series it is going to be available on byju's exam prep youtube channel for electrical electronics and computer science where we are going to discuss the most important questions for upcoming gate examination it is going to start from 10th of march so just after your uh, holy vacations holy uh, you can say buffer period you can start your preparation for bark in a full swing with byju's exam prep so subscribe to byju's exam prep if you have not subscribed so that you do not miss any of the important session yes everybody so let's start with the first question i will be discussing the concept related to the question so that even if a similar question is going to come in the examination you are able to handle it let us read the first question he is asking what is the disadvantage of using a standard hard run copper for overhead transmission line hard run copper basically means to have increased mechanical strength increase mechanical strength if you compare the bark examination difficulty level with the gate examination you can understand that it is going to be on the easier side because number of questions are more and the time is less and that is the reason you will find some direct questions also now if you see when we are designing our transmission line we are basically dealing with aluminum and copper and if you have to decide which material is going to be better for the designing part of the transmission line then we can compare the aluminum and copper material like this suppose i want to write the resistance of the aluminum conductor it is going to be rho aluminum l upon a aluminum and we are assuming that the length of the conductor is same for the copper conductor similarly you can write the resistance of the copper conductor as rho copper l upon a copper now if you see for same resistance if we compare the aluminum and the copper material then you can say if you compare it
L is going to be cancelled and you know that the resistivity of aluminum is going to be higher than resistivity of copper. Okay. If I remember uh, correctly, the resistivity of aluminum is somewhere 2.6 uh, micro ohm centimeter. Please cross check this value and the resistivity of copper is 1.68 micro ohm centimeter. So, you can understand that the resistivity of the aluminum material is going to be higher in comparison to copper. So, copper is obviously a better conductor. So, if you compare this equation, you will get that the cross-sectional area of the aluminum conductor is going to be more in comparison to the cross-sectional area of the copper conductor. So, if you compare, this is going to be your aluminum conductor and this is going to be your copper conductor. Now, suppose if you have Q as the, if Q is the line charge density, Q is the line charge density then because of the higher radius, higher radius for the aluminum conductor you can say the electric field stress at the surface of the aluminum conductor is going to be less than the electric field stress at the surface of the copper conductor. So, definitely for the same resistance and for the same length of the conductor the intensity of corona is going to be higher in case of copper conductor. So, aluminum is going to be a better choice, yes or no? Everybody tell me in the comment section. On the basis of corona phenomena, we can say because at higher voltages, we generally operate our transmission line at a very high voltage. So, at this high voltage, we can say that the possibility and the intensity of corona is going to be higher in case of copper conductor in comparison to the aluminum conductor. So, you see <coughs> apart from this there are lot of advantages for the copper material. If you see a copper material for designing our transmission line, it is going to be a better conductor, it is going to have comparatively better mechanical strength or tensile strength. And there are other advantages also, but one big disadvantage of copper is that it is going to be high in cost. It is going to be high in cost. Whereas, if you compare it with the aluminium, aluminium is one of the most abundant material in the atmosphere, you can say in the nature. And if you talk about the earth crust, this is the most abundant material in the earth crust. So, aluminum is going to be cheap and cost is going to be less in comparison to the copper material. Is it clear everybody just tell me yes or no in the comment section. I am not getting any comments. Are you able to follow this? If you have any doubt, you can ask me. So, simply the only reason what is the disadvantage for copper is for designing our transmission line is its high cost. High cost is going to be the main disadvantage. Now, the second question he is asking about the bundled conductor. What is the main advantage? What is the main advantage of bundled conductor? So, let us first talk about bundled conductor and then we will come back. If you talk about the bundled conductor, The basic idea about the bundled conductor is, suppose you have a big conductor like this, this single solid conductor is going to be broken into number of smaller subconductors which are going to operate in parallel for one particular phase or group of conductors. Suppose one big conductor is going to have the radius r and these subconductors are having the radius R B and suppose they are n in numbers. This is up to n. This is what we call as bundled conductor. If you compare the bundled conductor with the standard conductor, how a standard conductor looks like? 
standard conductor is something like this where number of strands are used but if you compare it it is a standard conductor but if you compare this conductor with the bundled conductor now bundled conductor is going to be like this i am just using two subconductors there may be n number of subconductors it means the spacing between the subconductors are going to be more whereas if you see the standard conductor they are going to have less spacing between the individual strands now because of this reason because of this reason you can say the gmr for a bundled conductor is going to be higher in case of compare if you do the comparison for a standard conductor so basically what is happening by using the bundled conductors you are increasing the gmr what is going to happen if you are increasing the gmr if you are increasing the gmr so the electric field stress at the surface of the conductor is going to be this is v phase upon gmr ln gmd upon gmr now if this gmr this is the logarithmic so we are not including this but if the gmr is increasing directly you can say the electric field stress is going to be reducing and this is the main reason why we go for the bundled conductor because we want to reduce the electric field stress at the surface of the conductor so that the possibility and the intensity of corona is going to be less the possibility and the intensity of corona is going to be less now there are so many consequences of using the bundled conductors for example if you talk about the inductance which we can write as 0.2 ln gmd upon gmr this is milli henry per kilometer now you are saying sir gmr increased gmr increased means inductance per phase reduced inductance per phase reduced so what is going to happen with the inductive reactance it is omega l per phase if the l is reducing x is also reducing what is going to happen with the capacitance it is given as 2 pi epsilon ln gmd upon r now i am not writing gmr why i am not writing gmr let me tell you if you talk about the capacitance calculation in case of capacitance calculation we are dealing with electric field and you know that electric field cannot be present inside the conductor magnetic field can be present inside the conductor but electric field cannot be present inside the conductor it means when we are doing the capacitance calculation there is no point of discussion for the internal flux there is no internal flux so what you are using as the gmr concept it is applicable actually for the inductance calculation not for the capacitance calculation capacitance calculation technically speaking the gmr concept is not applicable but for the sake of mathematical operation we can use this r as gmr but we have to avoid the 0.77 factor gmr without 0.7788 factor i hope it is clear but still it is like your gmr only so if you are saying gmr increased so this whole logarithmic is going to be reduced and if the denominator is reduced the capacitance is going to be increasing is it clear now if you talk about the surge impedance surge impedance is under root l by c now l is reduced c is increased so definitely the surge impedance is also going to be reduced what is going to happen with the surge impedance loading it is v square upon zc zc is reduced because we are using the bundled conductor so surge impedance loading is increased what is the meaning of surge impedance loading increase surge impedance loading basically gives you the ideal loading condition of the transmission line this is the ideal loading condition of the transmission line ideal loading condition of the transmission line
if you talk about the economic loading of the line, then economic loading of the line is always greater than surge impedance loading and it is less than the maximum power which can be transferred over the transmission line because if you reach this level then stability is going to be highly compromised. Now if you talk about the stability, what is going to happen with the stability? The real power transferred is given as P is equal to P max sin del where P max is given as mod V1 mod V2 upon x if you remember it. Now as I told you x is reduced keeping the voltage as constant. So P max is increased. Now for a constant power transfer if P max is increased then sin del has to reduce or del has to reduce. Del reduce means what? You are going to operate your system at a smaller value of power angle. So it is going to be something like this, having a better stability margin. This is del is equal to 90 and suppose initially you are operating here, but because del has to reduce, so you are operating here. So operating at a smaller value of del is going to give you better, better buffer for the stability or better stability margin so that overall stability is also going to be increasing. So these are the major consequences of using the bundled conductor. Any one of the consequence can be asked in the question. Now let us read the question. What is the main advantage of using the bundled conductors? It reduces the surface electric field stress on the conductor. This is true. Yes or no? And that is the reason we are using the bundled conductor to reduce the impact of corona. It increases the line reactance, this is wrong because line reactance is reduced. It decreases the line capacitance, wrong because the line capacitance is increased. So what is the correct option? The correct option is A. Is it clear everybody? If you are simply coming to the class and not asking a doubt, then it is of no use. The more you interact, the more you raise your questions, the more you raise your doubts, more will be more beneficial it will be for you. Everybody. Anyways, let us go to the next question. He is asking the selection of the size of the conductors for a distributor in a distribution system is governed by. Now please underline this distribution system. When you talk about the distribution system, what is the main criteria? Let us understand. First I will show you the distribution system. Now this is your transmission system, this is your transmission system, this is the distribution transformer, this section we are defining as feeder, after the distribution transformer we have a section which carries bulk amount of current, this is called feeder. Now the part where actually loads are connected this is called distributor, distributor, these loads are not directly connected to the distributor, they are connected through the service mains, service mains you can understand it is like a switch, yes or no? which load to be connected, which load to be disconnected, when connected, when disconnected, it decided by the service means. Now if you talk about the feeder, very easily you can understand that feeder is going to have bulk amount of current. Why? 
This is the transmission system. Transmission system is suppose operating at V1 volt. Distribution system is operating at V2 volt. Now you know V1 is going to be very very high in comparison to V2. Now for a given power, for a given power value, if voltage is severely reduced, so the current is going to be severely increased. It means there is going to be bulk amount of current. So the current carrying capability is one important criteria. And because bulk amount of current is going to be carried by the feeder, temperature stability and temperature rise is going to be one important criteria for designing the feeder. So, temperature rise or temperature stability. Now you see like your transmission system, loads are not connected in the feeder part. So, you can say in the feeder part also, current density is going to be constant like it was constant for your transmission system. Now, if you come to the distributor, please understand, in distributor, the current density is not constant. Current density is not constant because loads are connected. So, definitely current is going to vary. Current is going to vary means current density is also going to vary. Now you treat your distributor like an irrigation system in a village. Whenever the water canal is coming or getting into the village, the first field which is going to get the water is the field of the zamidar, the big landlords. Yes or no? And the last fag end of the canal where hardly there is any water, that will be giving water to the poorest of the poor farmers. The same thing is happening here. It means as a as a as an honest power system engineer, what is your responsibility? Your responsibility is that you should ensure the quality of power supplied to the last consumer connected to your distribution system. How it is going to be ensured? If you go from the distributor starting to the end, there will be a certain voltage drop. Yes or no? There will be certain voltage drop. Now, this voltage drop has to be within limits so that the power quality is not marginalized. Yes or no? And that is the reason while designing the distributor, one important criteria is voltage drop. One important criteria is voltage drop. <clears throat> is it clear? Everybody just tell me yes or no in the comment section. Are you able to follow this? Everybody just quickly hit the like button. What is the problem? If you are coming to the system, at least you should like the session. Any doubts, most welcome. Let us go to the next question. Now, this question belongs to the bundled conductors which we have just discussed. As I told you, let us go to the bundled conductors. As I told you, if the voltage and current are V and I for this single solid conductor and suppose here voltage is going to be same because the, all these subconductors are operating in parallel. Yes, Shiva and Saurabh, how are you? Welcome to the session. And the currents are going to be like this I1, I2, I3 up to In. If you apply voltage same, current follow the Kirchhoff's current law, you can say so, it is something like this plus I n. But you know that for the transmission system, current density is constant. And how we define current? Current we are defining as current density multiplied by cross sectional area. Current density is constant here also, here also. So, the cross sectional area we have to equal, equalize. So, it becomes A is equal to A1 plus A2 up to A n. Now, all these subconductors, if they are similar, if they are having the same radius, so their cross sectional area is also going to be same. So, can I write a small a is equal to n times a b square. Now, what is a? a is the cross sectional area that is pi r square. So, can I write r square is equal to n times r b square? Yes. 
So from here you can write the radius of the bundled subconductor as capital R upon under root N. Now this is just a general formula, but if you want to apply the same logic to this question, this question says that there are there is one bundle conductor having two subconductors of the radius R1 and R1. It is going to be redesigned as a four subconductor system, bundled conductor system, where two subconductors are having the radius R2 and the rest two are going to have the radius as R3. He is giving you the value of R1 and R2, he is asking the value of R3. So the only thing you have to do is, you have to write their areas and just equate, equate them. Yes or no? That is the same thing we have just done. So you can write 2A1 is equal to 2A2 plus 2A3. 2 is going to be cancelled. You can write R1 square is equal to R2 square plus R3 square. Or you can write R3 as under root R1 square minus R2 square. Put the values, what is R1? 2 centimeters becomes 4. What is R2? 1 centimeter minus 1. So, it becomes under root 3 that is 1.732 centimeters. <coughs> Shiva Ravi Chandan, you are a first year student and you want power system basic concepts. So, you can follow the you can follow the Baiju's exam prep YouTube playlist, okay. And if you are not able to find it, you can follow my personal telegram channel on Baiju's exam prep, that is electrical by Ashutosh Saxena, that is my name. I will share the playlist with you. If you talk about the books, okay, if you talk about the books, then I would suggest you the two books you can take as a reference, okay, two books. One is C.L. Vadva and other one is Nagrath Kothari. At your level, this is okay, okay. Do not start with Stevenson in the starting. It will take a couple of, it will take a couple of uh, times revision. After that, you will be able to go to the other standard books. So, once you complete it, then uh, you can go for those books like Stevenson, you can go for, uh, uh, there are two, three more books, okay, which you can go, but after completing these basic books only, otherwise the language is going to be a little complex and you may find, find it disinterested. Okay, let us see the next question. Now, this question simply asks you the capacitance of line per kilometer. It is a single phase transmission line. It is having two parallel conductors four meter apart. So, it is something like this. This is A, this is B, this is four meter apart. Okay. Radius of each conductor is two centimeter. He is asking the capacitance of line. Now, please understand, whenever you talk about the capacitance, you must have a reference because capacitance you talk about the voltage. Now, voltage cannot be expressed without a reference. Potential has no meaning without a reference, but potential is not absolute, it is always relative. Now, the midpoint of these two conductors we are taking as neutral, neutral point, then the capacitance between conductor A and the neutral point is C A N and the capacitance between the neutral point and the B conductor is going to be C B N. But he is not asking you the individual conductor capacitance, he is asking the line capacitance. Now the line capacitance is going to be the capacitance between A and B. Now capacitance between A and B is nothing but the equivalent of the series connection of these two capacitances, yes or no? So, if you know the expression for C A N or C B N that is 2 pi epsilon naught ln D by R 
farad per meter then you can say the line capacitance is simply going to be 1 by 2 times of either of these two values so you can find it so the expression for the line capacitance either you remember the formula or you use the logic it becomes pi epsilon naught upon ln d by r farad per meter which is 3.14 8.85 10 to the power minus 12 ln d is 4 meters and r is 2 centimeters r is 2 centimeters so it is 2 10 to the power minus 2 farad per meter if you solve this you will get the answer is it clear everybody so i think you must be getting a as the correct answer if you calculate it everybody tell me are you solving this yes uh, arvind reddy perfect it is going to be the line capacitance is going to be the series connection of individual capacitances of the conductors it was a direct question let us see the next question now this is very interesting question very important question if you talk about the acsr conductor it is a steel reinforced and this is aluminum and this is conductor so the name itself tells you that by using some technique some method we are increasing the mechanical strength yes or no now what is happening basically suppose you have a stranded conductor suppose you have a stranded conductor like this and suppose all of them are made of aluminium the best example of such a conductor is aac what is aac all aluminium conductors where all the strands are going to be made of aluminium the problem with the stranded conductor is that its mechanical strength is less when the mechanical strength is less what is going to happen if the mechanical strength is less then sag is going to be high yes or no sag is going to be high your conductor is going to be something like this so what is a sag sag is basically the drop in the conductor position from its ideal position this is what we are defining as sag and this is what we define as ground clearance this is what we define as ground clearance ravi ravi is saying sir uh, for last one and a half year i am preparing for gate but unfortunately exam went very bad now i am in confused mode i don't know what to do next give me some suggestion please see ravi it's not uh, because you are unfortunate please understand this first of all you are a you are an engineer you are not a philosopher you have to understand this you should have the courage that if something goes wrong you should have the courage to find your own failure what is the reason instead of saying unfortunate when you say unfortunate it means god has done something wrong with you this is not truth god does not differentiate between you and me or other other people it's simply because you have not prepared well and that is the reason you have not received success the only way out of this is that you do the hard work you prepare well there may be two reasons one reason is you don't want to go for this this particular exam somebody is forcing you to go for the gate examination if this is the case then it is better you leave your preparation and do something else which you can do better 
But if it's your own decision that you want to go through the gate examination and get the best career possible for your life, then you have to prepare more. You have to prepare hard. You have to prepare well. You have to prepare in the right direction. And nobody can stop you. But you can do all these things only when you remove this from your mind that it is somebody else fault. No, it's your fault. Okay, take the responsibility. When you win, you take the credit. But when you lose, you don't take the responsibility. Just sit back, relax and think for at least five, six days. What went wrong in these one and a half years? Because one and a half year is a significant time when you can prepare well for the gate examination. There must be some significant reasons because of which you are not getting the success. I would suggest you, I would recommend you, if you are having this kind of mindset, you are feeling confused, you contact me. You come to my personal telegram channel or personally also you can ping me. I will try to help you out. Okay, Ravi, but don't lose your heart. Jab jage tab savera. Jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha. Suraj ugega sabko dekhega. When you do the hard work, nobody see. But when you get the success, when you taste the success, when you shine like the sun, then everybody see your success, but not the hard work. So, hard work you have to do. Anyways, <clears throat> what we were saying? Yes. The problem with the standard conductor, all aluminum conductor is, the sag is going to be more because mechanical strength is less. If the sag is going to be more, then definitely the ground clearance is going to be less. If the ground clearance is going to be less, what will happen? For a given high voltage, there must be a minimum ground clearance to be established for the safety of the nearby personnel. Okay. For that reason, the number of towers and the height of the towers is going to be increased. So, number and height of towers is going to be increased. The number and the height of the towers to be increased, it means what? More cost, more cost. And this is the reason we go for ACSR conductors, steel reinforced aluminum conductors. What we do in ACSR? Now, when you are going from a standard conductor to the ACSR conductor, what is happening? The skin effect is reduced. It is not removed. It is not removed. It means skin effect is, is still present if you go for the standard conductor. Its intensity is less, but it is still present. It means even in this case also, most of the current will be concentrated near the outer strands and the inner strand, hardly there will be any effective current. Now, if there is no current in the inner strand, I will take out this strand, aluminum strand, and I am going to replace it with a steel strand. So, what will happen? The mechanical strength is going to be increased. Such a conductor we are defining as ACSR conductor, steel reinforced aluminum conductor. Now, when you do the calculation for GMR, when you do the calculation for GMR, do not include the steel wire. Why? Why not to include the steel wire? Because a steel wire does not carry any current. It is just for the sake of increasing the mechanical strength. Is it clear everybody? Just tell me yes or no in the comment section. Are you able to follow this or not? It's just there for increasing the mechanical strength. So, you should not include the steel wire in the calculation of GMR. If you see this standard conductor, it's a hypothetical standard conductor because generally you know for a standard conductor, there is a set pattern of conductors.
So, if you take it as the first layer, so the number of strands is 1, then multiple of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, so on. For example, this is the first layer, second layer is going to have 6 strand. If you go beyond this, if you go beyond this, then it is going to have 12 strands. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Similarly, if you go for the next layer, one more layer, you will have 18 strands. So, there is a set pattern. But here in the question, what you are having is, it is a hypothetical stranded conductor. He is asking the radius of each strand is r and he is asking, yeah, what is the GMR? He is asking the GMR. So, can you calculate the GMR? Yes. It is 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 we are not going to include in the GMR calculation. So, you can write the GMR of this conductor is GMR 1, GMR 2, GMR 3. How many GMR? 3. How many GMR you want? 1. What is the power? 1 by 3. Now, let us calculate GMR 1. What is GMR1? The effective radius for strand 1 and its distance from 3 and 2. Yes or no? Are you getting this or not? So, I am writing it 0 0.7788 R is the radius and the distance between 1 and 3 and the distance between 1 and 2. How many distances? 1. 2, 3, what is the power? 1 by 3, because GMR itself is a distance, okay. Just put the values 0 0.7788 R into, what is D13? What is D13? Now listen very carefully. Let me use this color. So, this is going to be this is going to be 2R, this is going to be R, this is going to be R. So, total 4R. So, 1 to 3 distance is 4R. Can I write here? D13 is 4R. What is D12? 1 to, 1 to 2. Now, please understand. This is R, this is R, this is R. So, this is 2R, this is R and this is R. Hello? So, this is 2R, this is 2R, so this is going to be 2 root 2R. So, this is 2 root 2R. Is it clear? So, just write it. 1 to 3 is 4R, 1 to 2 is 2 root 2R. What is the power? 1 by 3. You can calculate. What is GMR2? 0 0.7788 R distance between 2 to 1 and distance between 2 to 3 power 1 by 3. 2 to 1 is same as 1 to 2. 2 to 1 is same as 1 to 2. What is 2 3? Now 2 3 is same as 1 and 2. Same thing now. So this is also going to become as 2 root 2 R. So this is going to be GMR2 I am writing 0 0.7788 R into 2 root 2 R into 2 root 2 R. What is the power? 1 by 3. You can calculate this. Now, let us find GMR3. It is 0 0.7788 R distance between 3 and 1 and distance between 3 and 2 power 1 by 3. 0 0.7788 R. What is 3 and 1? 3 and 1 is 4 R. 3 and 1 is 4 R. So, this is 4 R. What is D32? It is 2 root 2 R. Same as GMR3 is same as GMR1. Just put the value then you will get. Is it clear everybody? <coughs> Everybody just tell me yes or no. Are you able to follow this? Hello.
So there are some questions in this uh, PPT which you can follow as a homework, okay, just solve them. And if you have any doubt, then you can ask me in my personal telegram channel, I will help you, okay. First you try it yourself, keep, keep the solutions for those as your homework. The rest of the questions you can follow as your homework, okay. So thank you so much friends for joining me live in the discussion. I hope uh, you enjoyed the session, you got something at least. And uh, once again, I wish you all the best for the bark examination and best wishes from the team by Jews on this festive occasion that is Holi. So happy Holi to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.